This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Yofi. And now that we're here, we can achieve so much. Every day, every time you sit, come to learn Torah. You need to learn the Torah like that it's the time of Mount Sinai, receiving the Torah from Mount Sinai. That's the approach, that's the mindset that you should come with. When you come to learn Torah, you're about to hear Divrei Elohim Chaim. And I promise you that even when Hashem was talking to Am Yisrael, there were so many thoughts and so many ideas and every word that Hashem was talking, He meant so much with it and there was so such huge intention in every speech, in every word, in every verse. But people took for themselves the conclusion that fit to them, to their place. That's how every person can hear what that Hashem wants from him, when his heart is aimed with his will to listen to the words of Hashem, to hear Dvar Hashem. Now, when we're reading Torah, when we're learning, now a person is teaching and saying something, it can contain a lot of things, a lot of ideas, a lot of thoughts, a lot of intentions, a lot of meanings, a lot of verses, a lot of knowledge, a lot of information. But you need to listen to the words of Hashem. What does it mean? It means that you need to listen to what that Hashem wants to say to you. To you right now, in the place that you're holding in your life, in your place, in the present, right now, there is something that Hashem wants to tell you. And you need to listen to that. You need to look for the light that comes between the crack. You need to see the spirit of Mashiach, like that the Zohar is saying that the spirit of Mashiach is Ruach Elohim Merachefet Al Pnei It's the spirit of God that hovers above the water, above the water of Torah. What does it mean above the water of Torah? That when you open the book, and you see the words and the sentences, the lines, the verses, the paragraphs, that's the Torah, right? Where is the spirit of Mashiach? Above the water. It's hovering above the book. It's your intention. It's your thoughts. It's your dedication. It's your hopes. It's your will. It's your desire. And that is the spirit that will bring redemption out of the books. Because when you have that book, so you can be a donkey that carries books with him, or wherever you go, you carry the book with you, and you have a suitcase full of books, and you're ignorant. You don't have no knowledge and no wisdom. You don't understand the right conclusions. You don't know how to bring out the pure water of Torah out of the book, out of the dark fire of the Torah. You don't know how to access the white fire the holiest fire, the purer fire, the fire of your soul. The fire of the, your soul is something that you can find within, inside of who that you are now. You need to know who you are. And today, one of my students asked me a question. She sent a message on WhatsApp. She said, I'm finding it hard to understand why they keep on putting those things on this table, and they don't know that I'm ADD and I cannot stop playing with everything that I have, that's the reason that I won't take the table cover off, right? And she's asking me, I'm finding it hard to understand what you mean when you say to find your true self. And it's something that I'm talking about for a very long time and I'm explaining it every time, and I think to myself that it's very clear. And then I said it again to her in the same words that I'm saying it in all of my classes. I told her, to be who that you are means that you need not to be afraid of expressing your true 
emotions and feelings and not to give up on your dreams and to be who that you wish to become, who that you feel that it's in your potential to be. Simple. And then she got it. Why did she got it? I'm saying it every time. I'm sending this message online for years. I'm talking about it in every class, at least three times a week. I'm talking online about this thing and I'm always mentioning that concept. So how come only now she got it? Because now she felt that those words were aimed to her individually, privately. She was tuned, she was in a listening situation. Um, um, status. She wanted to heal. She was ready to accept that message. She really asked her question, so she was really ready to hear the answer. Now, when you're coming to sit and learn, when you're coming to open a book and learn Torah, and you want to know what Hashem wants from you, then you will hear it. Only when you really want to hear the word of Hashem, Devar Hashem, so, what did I feel that is the most important thing that Hashem wants to tell us is that we should become who that He made us to be. He, the Almighty, He created, designed, made, planned, created the wide world with all the colors, with all the shades, with all the figures, with all the differences, with all the definitions, the tiniest differences between particles of creation, he made it all in a very precise way. And he is the only one that knows exactly why. But he made you to be exactly who that you are, to come down to earth exactly in that moment, through those parents, in that hospital, or in that house, to that family, in that community, in that area, in that zone, in the world, in that land, in that city, under that roof, with those cargoes and emotional backgrounds of people, in a certain date, in a certain year, certain generation, in a certain weather, with certain pictures on the walls. And all of those details mean something that only Hashem, the Creator, He knows exactly what it's all about. And we, you, me, we must nullify ourselves to the individual supervision of the Creator on our lives and to let Him run our lives. So it means that we must stop criticizing ourselves and blaming ourselves of being who that we are. Because who that we are is only who that He made us to be. Also your failures and also your downs and also your crises and your mistakes and also your sins. And now, I'm telling you again, also your sins are something that Hashem, the Creator of the universe, made you to go through. The only people that won't be able to accept my words right now will be those people that are trying to control the public with fear and with control and power. Those people will feel fear for my words because they will be scared that their flock, that their students Will, will, that they will lose the grip on their students because their students will not going to be scared anymore from the Creator after hearing me. And they're using your fear to control your lives. And they want to control you. That's why they're terrifying you. And that's why they're destroying your minds all of the time by telling you that Hashem will be angry and that Hashem will punish you and that you won't have a world to come, and that you won't enjoy the eternal life, and you won't have a share with the righteous ones in the future, and you won't see redemption, and on and on and on, and that you will be part 
of the soldiers of the devil, and if you're sinning, you're part of the forces of hell, and all kinds of <coughs> speeches that have been carved from the sewer. I don't know where they dragged it out from, but those words never came out of the holy mouth of Hashem. Never been said in Mount Sinai. In Mount Sinai, Hashem revealed His love to us, His unconditional love. Think about it. Hashem is telling to Moses, listen, go tell Am Israel the Ten Commandments. And then, while Moses is going and walking, holding the holy tablets in his arms, hugging them, protecting them, so excited, is about to reveal the truth to the world in the first time, Hashem is already saying the first commandment and the second one before Moshe reached the stage. Moshe is walking, holding the tablets, and Hashem is already saying, Anochi Hashem elokecha, lo yelecha elokim acherim al panai. Hey Hashem, why are you stealing the show? Why? You sent Moses to say the Ten Commandments. Why are you telling? Why are you saying the first? Why are you saying the second? Am Israel were not able to deal with that wisdom, with the light of the voice of Hashem. They saw the voices. Hashem was talking through the clouds. Hashem was talking from the fire. Am Israel died in that stage, in that place, in that moment. They lost their souls. Hashem had to revive them, to, 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 to bring life back into their dead bodies because they died from hearing Him. Why Hashem was doing that? After sending Moses with the holy tablets, he's about to speak, he's holding the mic, he's just about to open his mouth. Hashem was not able to stop himself from talking to us face to face. We were ready in the first time. We were so humble in the first time that he was able to express his love to us. So he couldn't stop his love. And he said, Hey, it's me, Anochi, Hashem Elokecha, it's me. I took you out of Egypt. Look at me, it's me. He's saying hello. That's the first thing he's saying. It's me. I took you out of Egypt. Anochi, it's me, Hashem Elokecha, I love you. That's the second thing he's saying. Please don't replace me with foreign idols. Don't worship no one else. Those are the only things that we heard from the flaming fire. I love you. Don't walk away. That's what Hashem is telling us. Two sentences, two holy commandments, the first and the second, been said by Hashem. Anochi Hashem Elokecha, it's me, I'm Hashem, your God, don't leave me alone, don't walk nowhere. And then he had to give the mic to Moses. That's it. That's the story. Those are the words of Hashem. Now, what is the problem of our nation? That in a certain time in history, Hashem ha decided to hide himself. Hashem took himself behind the curtains. Now, the holy righteous people of that generation found themselves in a huge problem. There was a catastrophe, a huge problem. We were praying and we were not being answered. We were doing tshuva and our sins were not being erased anymore. We would ask for forgiveness and it wouldn't come. We would try to sacrifice the animals in the temple and the fire was not going straight like the, the flames of smoke. The, the fire and, and the smoke was not rising in a straight line like it used to be before. We could see with our eyes that Hashem Barach went away disappeared. So now, terrified righteous people that lost their control and their success, not selfish control, their success on bringing purification and, and salvations to their nation, to their people, now had to find new solutions 
to fix reality. And with the years, with time, they found themselves rebuking and forcing our people to serve the Creator against the people's desire because people started to lose their connection to the Creator because of the darkness. So the righteous ones and the leaders that were very righteous were facing a very hard situation. They couldn't bring salvation anymore and they didn't want to lose the souls of the people. So they had to find advice and the advice was not always the most perfect one. During the horrible exiles and during the, 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 the horrible decrees and the darkness and the poverty and the wars and the plagues and things that took place in the world in the last 2,000 years, righteous people and rabbis and leaders of our nation had to use every advice that they found to hold us together. And that's why the Orthodox community today are being called Haredim. What's the meaning of the word Haredim? That they are scared, that they are terrified. It's coming from the verse that is saying on those people that they are scared while willing to keep the obligations of the Creator. Haredim lidvar Hashem. They, they, they are from, they want, they, they have fear from heaven. They have your atcha mind. But the truth is that we can see that a lot of fear penetrated into the camp. And people are serving the Creator out of fear and anxieties. And they're afraid to be punished. And they're afraid to be excommunicated. And they're afraid what people are going to say. And they're afraid not to fulfill their obligation. And they're afraid not to have a share in the world to come. And to be punished. And to be executed. And to be stoned. And to be whatever. They're afraid. Now, I don't know about you. But about myself, I know that when I'm scared, when I'm afraid, I'm not thinking right. When I'm acting out of fear, I'm not in my 100% potential. When I'm scared, I forget things, I'm making mistakes, I'm not functioning in the perfect way that I am when I'm happy, when I'm glad, when I'm satisfied when I have everything that I need. When I'm scared, I'm not functioning right. Now, there are many, many people in our generation that fear is the main motive, mo 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 motor of their life. This is the main engine and fuel that is pushing them to function. And it's not because that this is the most pure source of energy, it's because that their life been programmed and built to function based on rebukes, screamings, insultings, shames, and, and, and orders. And those people are those people that lost themselves the most. Because when you're afraid, you're finding, like we explained on those righteous people, when you're scared to lose something, you're afraid to be punished, you're afraid to lose. So then that fear will push you to the corner to do whatever it takes to save yourself. To save yourself from another rebuke, to save yourself from another insulting, to save yourself from punishments in this world or in the world to come. To save yourself. So to save yourself for that, noble cause for that noble purpose of saving yourself a person is finding himself that he can do whatever it takes just not to be hurt and then out of that fear a person finds himself lying and cheating and making up stories and justifying himself with no end and become a person 
that except of protecting himself all of the time, he doesn't have no true self-being. He is not himself because he's only reacting, corresponding to his fears. When someone is attacking him, so he thinks, who should I be right now? How should I react right now? Should I attack or should I run? Should I lie? Should I make up a whole different story? Should I be quiet? Should I play dumb? Whatever. And he is acting instead of being who that he is. So if we want to find our true selves, first of all, we have to confront our fears and not to be scared of our fears because that's the advice of the evil inclination to use fear to control your mind and this is exactly what the, the governments are doing and this is exactly what the, the big leaders of huge communities are doing forcing themselves on the public that's exactly what the parents that doesn't know how to educate their children are doing with their children, terrifying them, terrorizing them, and by that, pushing them to the corner, and then it's easier to catch them and to control them and to command them and to tell them what to do and to force them under your selfish will of control that is based on your fear of losing control so we, as those children, as those students, as those free people that wants to live our life based on love and not on fear, we, first of all, must break those chains of fears, of fear that are controlling and tying our lives and making our free lives to be lives of a prisoner in a prison, in a cell. So the evil inclination, the Yetzirah found that advice to tell you that horrible things will happen to you if you're not going to do this and that, if you're not going to be scared, if you're not going to let him continue running your life, if you're not going to let the fear control your life, Horrible things will happen to you. That's the advice of that person that is trying to terrify you and to take control over your life through fears. He's aiming you to his location, that you will be close to him, that he will have the ability to control your life. So he's telling you that fear is your solution, while fear is your enemy and your destruction that is destroying your happiness and making you lose yourself. So the first thing that we should do is to cut ourselves from the chains of fear and to deal with the fear itself because that the fear is lie, is not the truth. When someone is telling you you're gonna die, I promise you that in that moment, 20 years have been added to your life. When someone tells you you're going to lose your money, I promise you that if you will strengthen yourself in faith, huge piles of money are going to flow into your bank account. Your pockets will be fat that you won't find a solution what to do with your money. Only because that you fought against your fears because the foundation of faith of Judaism of truth is to count on the Creator that he is supervising and protecting you and loving you you need to count on him you need to pray to him in time of crisis in time of trouble in every time of difficulty to the believer there is a solution the Almighty so there's no reason to be scared just to fight with your fears and to push yourself to faith, to believe, to believe that you will find a solution, to believe that you will find an answer to your difficulties, that the Creator will provide, that the Creator will help. Not only that He is with you even when you're down, 
that he loves you and there is a deeper meaning even when you're down. I hate that depression approach, that depressed approach. I hate it. Say thank you when you suffer. It's all for the good. You must accept it. I'm not accepting it. I'm not accepting the fact that there are people that are homeless. I'm not accepting it. I'm not accepting that people are being abused and being raped on a daily basis. I'm not accepting it. I don't see what's so good in it. I don't see. Can I have a tissue, please? <coughs> I don't see the good. I don't see the good. I don't know. Maybe you're wiser than me. I'm not claiming to be the most wisest person in the universe. I'm not. I'm a regular human being. I love Hashem. I know Hashem loves me. I cannot see my brothers and sisters suffering, wishing death and the life, hate their lives, hate their families, cannot stand their, 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 their parents, wants to run away. People want to commit suicide. People want to die. People are drowning themselves in drugs, in alcohol, with no end to medications and prescriptions of, 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 of things that are just helping those people to escape from reality because they cannot stand it. I cannot accept it. I can never, can never accept that approach that will tell me that it's the will of Hashem. Now you're going to say, but Hashem can change everything. If Hashem will want to bring redemption, Hashem can do it in a minute. I'm asking you as a parent, that let's say that you are the most wealthiest parent in the world. You have millions. It means that now, today, in the present, you're going to give it all to your child? No. If you know that your child is still not responsible enough to his actions, if you still know that he can destroy the wealth that you're going to inherit him, you're not going to give it yet. If now you as a parent want to feed your child with the best food in the world, now you're going to feed him when he is still one year old or two years old. No, he's not able to digest that kind of food. Now you want to teach him wisdom. So now you're going to take a five years old child and going to put all of your wisdom into his mind. He's going to die. He's going to explode. He's not able to contain all of your thoughts. He's tiny. So also the Almighty, that he has the powers and he can do and he's above everything. He is limited and tied in that way of being our parent. He's stuck with us. Now, as our father, he must give us the food and the bounty and the wisdom and the miracles and the salvation with a tiny teaspoon. Or else we're going to die. Or else we're going to lose our touch. We're going to lose our wisdom. We're going to lose our bounty. We're going to lose control, like we lost it when we had the temple. When every morning and every night all of our sins would be erased and we forgot Hashem. We would go to the temple, we would sacrifice the animals, and we were sinning all day long. We wouldn't care about each other. We wouldn't be generous. We stopped being generous. We stopped being kind. We stopped being nice. We stopped seeking for Hashem. We were not looking for faith anymore. We had everything we needed. We had Siata Dishmaya. When you have help from heaven, you don't need heaven anymore. You have it. It's yours. When you live in heaven, you don't need to look for heaven. When you have heaven in your pocket, that's it. You have it. Hashem Itbarach wants to bring us to that point that we will have the ability to enjoy the bounty, to enjoy the godliness, to enjoy His existence. He wants to deliver Himself 
to us. He wants to walk with us inside our camps. He wants to live with us inside of our houses. He wants all your prayers to be answered. He wants to bring complete redemption. He is sitting and crying and his eyes are tearing and his large, huge tears are falling to the ocean, to the large sea. And he's crying on the arrogance, on the pride of his nation on how that we lost our humility, on how that we lost our connection to Him. On that He is crying every night and roaring three nights, three times every night like a lion. Crying on how that He lost His children, on how that He lost so-called His wife, on how that He lost the Shekhinah Dosha. And to think to ourselves that this is the will of Hashem, that's a complete Lashon Ara, horrible, horrible, bad words on the Creator. To think that He wants children to be abused, women to be raped, people to fall to hard drugs, people to lose their happiness, to be beaten, to be ashamed, to be insulted. To think that this is the will of Hashem is a lie. Those are the judgments of heaven's court. That is the result of the exile. That's what that happened after thousands of years of exile, of darkness, of Hashem still hiding Himself from us. But when we're going to call Him, when we're going to come back to simplicity, to simple faith, when we will be true believers that believes in the goodness of the Almighty, that believe in the kindness of the Creator. And in time of trouble, in time of difficulty, in time of weakness, we're going to call Him from the bottom of our hearts. He will answer us like that He answered us all. Because all of us, we saw miracles until today. Because if we wouldn't see miracles, we wouldn't sit here and listening to that class. The only reason that we believe in Hashem is because that in a way we saw Him already. We saw and recognized His supervision. If it's through friends, if it's through books, if it's through lectures online, if it's through Rabbi Google that answers your questions all the time, if it's through random situations that took place in your life that shown to you that there is a hidden hand that supervises and controls the world. You saw Hashem. That's why you're here. So based on that, you need to run your life in that path of faith, to be a real believer that believes in the kindness of Hashem, even if you're in the hardest time of your life, in the worst darkness of your life. There is only one question that you need to ask yourself. Who I want to be? Who am I? That's what you need to ask yourself. Who am I? in this circus? Who am I in this world, in that darkness? Who am I? What is my job? What is my mission? I'm a warrior. I'm a soldier. You know, Rabbi Akiva, he was one of the righteous ones. Rabbi Akiva is such a famous rabbi known in the world and his name is great and famous. Rabbi Akiva had 24,000 students that died. All of them died except of five. After the 24,000 less five students died, he went to those five that survived and he told them, let's go and establish the Torah and gonna start it all over again and through those five students, we have the Torah that is known to all today. Only because the Rabbi Akiva found power 
after the worst destruction of his life, after building everything from zero, he came to a place that he had 24,000 students walking after him from one Beit Midrash to the second, escorting him and following him. Huge following of 24,000 people walking with him, escorting him in the streets. They all died except of five. And he is looking at those fives, five and telling them, we are going to start it all from the beginning again. And based on that, we have the Torah today because they delivered it. They passed it to the second generation and then to the third and to the fourth until today, that we can open books like it's nothing, that we can watch classes online like it's free. It's free because of the dedication of people like Rabbi Akiva. And what is stopping you from being Rabbi Akiva in this generation? Rabbi Akiva started his tshuva process when he was 40 years old. Before that he started to learn the Hebrew ABC, he didn't know any rule in Judaism at all. When he was 40 years old, he was an Amaaretz. He was ignorant. He was a boo. He didn't know how to read. He didn't know how to keep Shabbat. He didn't know what the difference between kosher food and not kosher food. He didn't know which vessels are pure and which are not. He didn't know that you need to cut your fingernails before of Shabbat. He didn't know that you're not allowed to water your garden in Shabbat. He didn't know how to wash your hands from a cup. He didn't know. He didn't know anything. He started it all when he was 40. He went and learned with six great children. First grade children, six years old children. He sat with them in school and learned Aleph, Bet, Kametz Aleph, A, Kametz Bet, Ba, Kametz Gimel, Ga. That's how he started. And children and people were laughing at him. And he continued. He went to the fields and he was crying to Hashem. And his hero wife Rachel was helping him to deal with those humiliations. And she was a good example for him. And she backed him up. And he became that huge rabbi that had that huge following 24,000 people. But one day they all died. And he started it all over again from zero. And that dedication brought the result that the flaming fire of Torah will go from one generation to the next. Because heroes makes heroes and cowards make cowards. So don't let those cowards that made you to be a coward to keep on controlling your life and become a student of those heroes that will flame that flaming fire of your soul in your heart, that you will become that hero that you are, that you already are. That is who that you are. You are who that you are. You are who that you are. You are it. You don't need no one to tell you who you are and what you need to do. You can search for it. You can ask Hashem. You can go and learn if you desire, but you should learn with the intention of being truthful to the nature of your own soul and not to become a robot 
a droid that is functioning and doing and keeping and running and so scared and don't want to be afraid and what he gonna do and if they gonna say and what he gonna do and how he gonna respond and what they gonna say and what he gonna say about that and maybe I'm not fulfilling my obligation and maybe I'm not doing it right and what gonna be and in heaven and that they won't gonna punish me and she didn't go to the mikveh and they didn't go to school and what I'm gonna do and the rabbi gonna say hey we're not in Auschwitz anymore. We're not in the camps. Relax. You need to break your own patterns of being scared of people. Because the verse is saying, Lota guru mipne ish. You're not allowed to be afraid of no man. You need to have faith in heaven. You want to have fear from heaven? Have fear from heaven. How are you going to define fear from heaven? Is it simple fear? Oh, Hashem! Is he a cruel leader that you need to be scared of him? No way. It's admiration. Admire him. Try to fulfill, to satisfy him, to keep his will with all your heart. Be scared that you're going to fail because you want to succeed, because you want to accomplish, because you want to achieve perfection, because you desire good. Be scared to fail, but don't be afraid. Be a hero with a purpose in life. Become who that you are in your nature. You're not bad. Your failures didn't take place in your life because you're evil. You're not evil. Stop following that criticism. People that told you you're evil made you think that you're evil. People that told you you're stupid made you think that you're stupid. You're not stupid at all. You're not evil. You have a simple mind. You have your own nature. You're a dreamer. You're a hoper. You're a certain person. You're an artist. You're who that you are. You think slow. So what? I'm slower than you. You don't know how slow I am. Be who that you are because you are who that Hashem, the creator of the universe, made you to be. So nullify yourself to His highest intention of making you in a certain shape, with certain nature, with certain life experience and, and, and emotional cargo, and try to figure out what Hashem wants from you through who that He made you to be. And try to understand what is written while reaching to the spirit of Mashiach that is hovering above the book. It's your intention. It's how that your heart is aimed to the limud, to the learning, it's your approach, it's your attitude, it's your heart. You need to serve Hashem with all of your heart, with all of your spirit, with all of your power. So you must be who that you are. So if you want to be who that you are, you cannot run your life based on your fears. Your fears are lying to you. They're telling you that bad things will happen to you. But it is a lie. If every time that you will find yourself scared from something, you're going to tell yourself, no, 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 no. I'm not following that path anymore. And you're going to make 180 degree change and going to go in the opposite direction, you will always succeed. Always. If he tells you that if you're going to quit that job, you're going to lose your money, quit that job and you're going to make tons of money. If he tells you that by not talking about your emotions, something bad is going to happen to you, go and talk about your emotions. What's going to happen to you? Only good. You will see, oh, you're going to be kicked out of the house. It will bring you to yourself. It will bring you to your happiness. If you will continue to walk in that path.
Now you're out of the house. Deal with it with no fear. What am I doing? Think. Don't be scared. You will find the answers to all of your questions when you will attach yourself to Hashem through your inner love, through your confidence, through your faith. And you're losing yourself when you're trying to attach yourself to a fake God while being scared from your own fears because you're not attaching yourself to no one when you're scared. When you're scared, you're just trying to protect yourself. And by that, you're revealing that you don't have faith in the Creator that He's supposed to protect you in time of difficulty and crisis. You're showing you're lacking some faith when you're scared. So fight your fears and become a hero, honest and sincere. Allow your sensitivity to be expressed, your emotions to be expressed. And say your thoughts, say your words, do your thing, create, sing, learn, dance, walk, work. Be a believer. There were hidden righteous people that no one knew them. They were learning at nights when they had time. After working every day from 5 till 12 at night. Righteous people. Why they were so righteous? Because they were kind. And they were nice. And they were smiling. And they knew how to respect. And how to give charity. And how to support. And they were righteous. And they are the righteous ones. The title of Rebbe doesn't necessarily mean righteous. A long beard doesn't necessarily mean pure or holy. Side curls, dark hat, the long black jacket doesn't necessarily mean kosher person, a holy person. Not at all. Many liars pretending to be righteous and they're only after honor and power and control and money and worse desires than that like that you all know so don't be afraid to fight against those people as well <coughs> because who they are to depress our nation of oh, the rabbis so what does it make a change it makes a difference you know who King David was fighting with? They were rabbis. You know who Moses was fighting with? Oh, they were big rabbis. Big rabbis. Korach v'chol adato, they were big, big rabbis. Big rabbis. Bigger than the biggest rabbis that we have in our generation. And Moshe Rabbeinu was not afraid. He was just being truthful. And King David, when he felt fear, he knew what the solution is. To go and scream to Hashem. Hashem save me. Hashem help me. Hashem protect me. Hashem help me. Hashem hug me. Hashem cover for me. Hashem support me. Save me from my enemies. He knew the truth. When he was scared, he went to deal with his fears in the fields, in the desert. You went to speak to Hashem. You're afraid. What's going to happen to me if I'm going to go and speak to Hashem in the night? Go speak to Hashem about your fears in the night. Go. Make one step into the darkness. Say to Hashem, Hashem, I'm scared. Hashem, I'm scared. Hashem, I'm scared. Hashem, I'm afraid. Hashem, I don't know. Hashem, save me. Hashem, please help me. Hashem, protect me. Hashem, I'm scared. Hashem, I don't know. If that's your prayer, it's amazing. Gewaldic. It's the best prayer. If it's coming from your heart, how can it be better than that? Don't lie to yourself, pretending it's all for the good. There is a purpose to it. And by that, justifying your depression and your sadness and your loneliness and your low self-esteem. 
and your foreign and negative thoughts that you're not worthy, that you cannot succeed. Don't be a coward. Be a strong person that is able to admit the truth and to fight to protect the poor and to fight to uncover and to reveal the real creator of the universe and to give him the power that he needs from his people to believe in him, to praise him, to ask for his mercy to be revealed in the world and not the judgments anymore. And that's it for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.